What is going on, dudes? Lady dudes. We've got a little redo here because I kind of flubbed it up. So I'm a nincompoop. I'm a fairly new-ish player. Uh, and so I didn't quite understand fully what were the easiest signs and what were the most quintessential cards that uh, do miss timing uh, when Link summoned. So um, we've got it now. I made the list last night. I feel bad because like a good amount of people actually saw it while I was asleep because I uploaded it or, like right. I made the video and uploaded it right before I went to bed. Um, and I feel bad because a, a good amount of people saw it and they were, I got a couple comments saying like, yeah, dude, some of these aren't, uh, don't do what you think they do. Uh, they miss timing, so they don't get to resolve their effects. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of jank, but I went through, I figured out one, uh, I condensed the list, took off the ones that, um, do miss the timing. Um, so we're going to start again, start anew because I think we've got a solid list here. Um, and I just want to do it right. I didn't want to leave a video up there that was wrong like that. You know, it just felt wrong. I, I, if people didn't know, I was going to be misinforming them. And for people who do know, they're just going to think I'm a freaking fool idiot, which is right. But, you know, why would I let that happen? So, I guess, as we did in the last one, we're going to start off with Salaman Great Al Mirage, what this card does. Essentially, it's a Link 1 uh, Fire Cybers Effect Monster with zero attack. Uh, it requires one normal summoned monster with 1,000 or less attack, so very, very generic in that regard. Um, with a quick effect that says you can tribute itself, then target one monster your opponent controls. Or, sorry, target one card, one monster you control. It cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects this turn. Also, while it's in the graveyard and a normal summoned monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can special summon this card back from the graveyard. Um, both okay effects. I don't actually think they come up all that crazy often. Definitely can come up for sure. Um, but it's not the main thing in the card. The main thing in the card is it's just going to allow you to get uh, weaker monsters um, into the graveyard. What is going... All right, all right, all right, all right, we're moving on. So there we go. So we'll start with the ones that are pretty obvious that I think a lot of people already have their eyes on. Um, with Salaman Great Almirage coming out, Sangan being one of the big ones, it's abusable, I think mainly in um, Altergeist is what I heard. So uh, like you, you normal summon this, you banish it um, to get Almirage, and he will search you Multifaker, because I believe Multifaker... Uh, is less than 1500 attack so um, real quick like you just put a monster on board which isn't the biggest deal but getting loading multifaker in your hand it's setting a bunch of back row is going to let you to resolve multifaker set up the situation you're looking for which is multifaker and so uh on the field to bounce and then you know the rest of your trap cards stun the rest which is pretty cool he definitely can work in other decks too i imagine right because He's just your normal summon, link him away, search anything with 1500 or less attack. You could search a hand trap, you know, a ghost girl, whatever. Um, but it's pretty, seems pretty good to me. Pretty generically good, and we can see this card see a lot of play, which is awesome because Sangan is one of those classic cards. Uh, Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak, I hear in Orcus this card, or I don't know if it's this one specifically, but I think some of the Phantom Knights, which tend to be bricky in in uh, Orcist builds, should you see them in your opening hands, the, I believe this card does allow them to do more for you. Possibly do full combo with them as your normal summon is what I heard. I don't know too much about that. I'm not too, uh, I'm not an Orcus player by any means, so I don't really know the ins and outs completely of the deck. Um, but I've heard it. They Almirage makes the Phantom Knights better, which is nice. Next is Alistair the Invoker. We've seen Invoked Mech Knights pop up here and there. Um, the main thing here is you're just getting a free link material because Al Invoker, Alistair the Invoker searches Invocation, which fuses from the graveyard or field. Uh, so, like, why not be able to link Alistair off for a free link material before you just um, fusion? Uh, and also you can just, I believe, just use Almirage as well just to get... Um, Rather than relying on like your opponent using Ash Blossom or you using an Ash Blossom to put like a fire monster in grave, uh, you can just use your Almirage to get uh, Purgatrio out and be very offensive right out the gate, which is pretty nice. So, uh, you know, I definitely, definitely one that I think people have had their eye on. Uh, Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion. This card specifically just because. As your normal summon, this card wasn't that great before unless you could special summon other cards and then link it off from there. But 
uh, because this card, because of Al Mirage, you can just normal summon this, link it off, get a token. You've got a link to, you got a one card link to, and that's the main important thing with O Lion here. But everybody knows that. Uh, for a couple cards, these are the cards that I flubbed up on the last list. Pet in the Dark Clown does miss timing just because um, his effect needs to trigger when he's sent to the graveyard, and if you're linking him off, the summoning is happening like in between, so he's missing his trigger period, essentially. Uh, so he does not get to resolve, otherwise he would be absolutely busted. That's what one thing that I missed, and I had never really looked too hard into it. None of the decks I've really played have really like messed around too much with with timing, like missing timing. So uh, this is like the first run in, but I'm definitely gonna keep an eye out for it in the, for the future. Uh, next is Dupe Frog, another, this is like the classic one that everybody knows, uh, missing timing a lot. And with Al Mirage, Al Mirage might make, like might've made like frogs way better if Dupe wasn't uh, like a, a, a card that does miss timing, but it is what it is, we're moving on. So we'll finally get to our top, I think, five here. We'll start with Doom Dog Octhrows. This is a card I really like. I used this briefly in um, Layer of Darkness when Grinder Golem was still around because Grinder Golem is a level eight fiend. So you could just use, you could like Ties of their Brethren out this card, then like tribute it off with Lilith, and then uh, you'll search um, Grinder Golem for a follow-up play on the next turn. Or sometimes you can just, uh, depending on the hand, you could just start Grinder Goleming the same, like turn one. Um, but he's really cool. Um, obviously, he just searches any level 8 Fiend monster directly from deck to hand. So uh, there's a decent amount of those right now. But I don't think any of them are too crazy. Like I said, Grinder Golem was like the main one at the time. And that would have made this card busted. Because this card as your normal summon just gets you to Grinder Golem. And then you just go. You just make like an insane link play. I doubt we'll see Grinder Golem for a very long time. Um... But yeah, this card's really cool. I like that it's kind of generic. Like, Fiends are always a very popular uh, type um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! So we're definitely going to see more level 8 Fiends. I know that. So keep an eye on this card because as your normal summon, you can fetch those straight from deck. So yeah, Doomdog Octhros. Next up is Carboneton, a card I didn't really know about until, I guess, semi-recently. Um, if he battles a fire monster, he gains 1,000 attack during damage calculation. whoop de doo he's 1,800 against Salamangrates whatever. Uh, the main thing, though, is that you can banish him from your graveyard uh, for cost to special summon from your hand or deck, any level 7 or lower dragon-type normal monster in defense position. Um, this is really nice, one, because I know guard dragons are a big thing right now, so this can be a possible extender for that deck, while also um, just main, it's just your normal summon. Like the biggest w problem with this card is if you draw it, you're kind of looking at it and you're like, how do I how do I get this engraved without normal summoning it? And now normal summoning it isn't even that bad. I mean, you're at least making a link to. Um, it does have to be a dragon normal monster, so it's not like they will extend you much. But depending on the you know where you go with stuff, uh, you could be in a really nice position. And depending on what the rest of your hand is, especially in, in a deck like guard dragons or whatever, this card could be a solid. Uh, normal summon, but I think it's something to keep your eye on. Um, not too crazy, but I think he is really cool, and uh, yeah, that's why he's on the list. Next up is something I think a good amount of people will be excited about Elements of Hero Shadow Mist. Um, so, Shadow Mist, if you don't know, is like one of the centerpieces. Him and like Stratos are like two of the centerpieces for hero decks. Uh, when he's special summoned, you can add a, a change quick play spell card from deck to hand, and when he's sent to the graveyard, or if he is sent to the graveyard, you can add a hero monster from your deck to your hand. Um, you can only activate one of those a turn, so uh, obviously you got to choose wisely, but depending on the makeup of your hand, so like, I had seen people dropping copies of Shadow Mist in their, in their hero builds, dropping him down to two, maybe even one in some instances, um, because he's like not great to open up with. But Al Mirage actually makes him a little better to open up with because he still is going to get that search. Sometimes you like you're like I'll normal or I'll set Shadow Mist and hope my opponent knocks it off the field so that I can get a search on the end phase or something, right? Get some value off him. But now you don't have to worry. Wait for that turn one. You can normal him, and even if the rest of your hand doesn't allow you to get anything else on the board, you just link him away to search. And Maybe that's not the best thing, but depending on your hand, depending on the rest of your hand, you may be able to work from there. So uh, this was a little one. It's not a huge one, but I know heroes are beloved, and I just think this is one of the few cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! that works specifically with Salamangrid Al Mirage as your normal summon. 
and I just wanted to bring it up. So Shadow Mist is here, and I think Amaraj makes him a little bit better. <sighs> All right, so next, the two, the last two kind of go together. Um, they're both insect support, and maybe you don't like insects, but I feel like it's just one of those things. Like so many of the, there are these archetypes, or not types, archetypes, but types that have a good amount of just like generic support for their whole type and all they need is like one random archetype that's like solid and the generic support they have will just like push them the rest of the way right and i think these are two of those cards resonance insects is the first one when it's sent or if it's sent from the field to the graveyard you can add a level five or higher insect monster from deck to hand and then when it's banished if it's banished you can send an insect monster from deck to graveyard so he's a foolish burial and a searcher all in one but he only searches level five or higher insects which can be weird for certain plays but with cards like doom dozer he literally will search a doom dozer and then if you have any other insect in grave Grave, Doomdozer will banish him and he can send another card, which he can send the second card we're about to look at, which is Goki Pole, a slightly newer card. Was this Savage Strike? I can't remember if this was Savage Strike or this. I think it's a set before. Um, can't even remember. Uh, was this Cybernetic Horizon or the Fusion set? I can't remember. But really cool card. When this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a level four insect monster from deck to hand, specifically level four, not four lower. So that could, you know, conflict with future archetypes. But for the most part, pretty good. Level four is, is a good uh, level to add. Um, but if you add a normal monster with this effect, you can special summon it instead, or not special, but like special summon it after. Then you can destroy one monster on the field with attack higher or equal to attack than. Um, the monster you special summon. So going second has that extra value of one spamming the field a little more and also removing a threat um, or at least forcing protection or whatever, um, which is really, really nice. But same thing, this card is your normal summon, just becomes a free search or even a free special. And then two insects, we already see how what Orcus can do with any two monsters on the field. We've got that right here, um, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and also, with, like I said, with Residence Insects, the combo of like, um, like normal this, link it off, get Doom Dozer, and as long as you can put any other insect in grave, you can use Doom Dozer to banish him and the other insect, then he will send you Goki Pole, and Goki Pole can special you another insect, right? So you really have some decent extendability right there, and that's just completely generic insect support. So um, all we need, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure that Battle Wasps are going to be it, but uh, any archetype, maybe if Insectors come off the ban list enough or something, you know, just something. Something insect-wise comes up. These cards could be the cards to really push it over the edge, and I think you should keep your eye on it. Um, I wouldn't even blame you if you picked them up now, just because like should that ever happen, like they would definitely uh, jump in price. But um, these are pretty much the big ones. The big ones that I saw that I thought could definitely um, make Almirage a little more playable, just in the whole scope of Yu-Gi-Oh and just uh, random decks that actually made more use of Almirage than you probably thought they did. But that's pretty much it guys for my video here like i said in the last one if you saw that one i'm sorry uh, i don't think this one, one will get many views but because uh, so many people already saw the first one but uh, i just wanted to write the wrong get get the video out there that i wanted that's i feel right and nothing too wrong in there obviously let me know if i missed anything on here if there's a a monster that you think al mirage uses that i didn't get on here maybe i missed it i went through the whole like 1200 monster list or whatever 1250 monster list so i didn't read every single card but for the most part i i did a nice healthy scan so let me know what you guys think uh, i'm gonna get the hell out of here thank you so much for watching if you want to see more stuff from me as always subscribe to the channel because we're doing it we're doing a damn thing and i love you peace